all right dudes we are back back with another build this is a giant atx 980 from tim shout out at melbourne cargo bike so this was his old frame that he resprayed it has a pretty nice paint job on it it's kind of like a metallic gray i think this was a pretty high-end frame back in the day or mid-end frame but it has a rigid fork here and tim was saying it has the correct axle to crown as the old shocks and he sprayed this the same but yeah looking pretty good pretty clean already there's some rust on the steerer uh, i'm going to clean it up here has a nice little seat post clamp and a seat post so that's all ready to go you can see the old style stays a little bit of rust on the canty bolts but uh should clean up all right and then this old style chain guard it's zip tied on but it also has a, a little bit of velcro here that you can take off it has a bb in it the bb is pretty smooth but i'm going to take it out anyway see how it is and got these bolts but yeah, it should build up pretty nicely. A little bit of a sleeper bike, I think. It's pretty light as well, so it should be a pretty fun ride. This is the grips that I'm going to use, and I had it for a while. I think I can fix this up. It's just a, I'd say it's Mountain LX, so probably just a medium grip set. But super solid. Got the front Mac, rear Mac, cranks, triple. And I also have this. This is also from Tim, uh, but it's a front Mac for this bike. Yeah, if you buy an old frame, just make sure if you're getting parts for it, you take this into account, whether it's a top pull here, you can see the cable comes down, pulls from the top, and it's going to move the front mech. And then there's also a bottom pull where some cables come from the bottom, and then they pull down. So yeah, just be careful of that when you're getting parts, otherwise you'll have to resource another part. And then wheels-wise, I'm not sure about the wheels yet. I haven't got a set of wheels for this, but hopefully something pops up while I'm working on, working on the bike. I did get a headset already, which I'll show you. Yeah, the headset is just a 1 and 1 8 headset. I just got it off uh, eBay, I think. But it's, I used it for another bike. It was I used the same brand on another bike and it seemed pretty solid, so I'm using the same one. And I just got silver to match the seat post clamp. Speaking of canties, you will need uh, some type of cable hanger as well. Either going from here or somewhere else. And then on the front, you will need a cable hanger here, around the front. But yeah, it doesn't really have a hanger for this. So I think this was made for V-brakes. So yeah, maybe I might switch up the brakes. Not sure yet, we'll see. Yeah, so it's pretty funny that it had zip ties and Velcro, I guess, uh, you want it to stay on extra, didn't want it to come off. But yeah, this was underneath. So yeah, funny little surprise. Maguras on board. Pretty fresh. So just cleaning the frame here, just using uh, a border detergent and soap mix. Honestly, the frame was pretty clean already, so there wasn't much to do. But yeah, it's good to give it a once over. Make sure you can see the seat, it fell off the seat posts. Make sure it, uh, it's nice and secured. 30.8 if anyone's wondering just cleaning the brake buses here with a little WD-40 and a wire brush I think I used a little bit of foil as well but yeah I'm gonna try to do this build without a vapor rust just because the vapor rust I have is kind of done its job and I have another batch but I probably just too lazy just to open it so I'm gonna do this one without it and see how it goes um, but yeah after I cleaned it I just put a little bit of grease on here just to protect it from rusting again. And then here, same with the steerer. You can see this is basically just surface rust. You just use a wire brush and you can get it all off. You can use foil and sandpaper if you need to, but most of it comes off. And then a little bit of WD-40 or grease just to protect it from rusting again. I store most of my stuff when I'm doing a build. I store it outside. So it's kind of a good test to see if it will rust again. You're just cleaning the other front brake busters on the fork and with the wire brush just be careful you don't scratch the paint uh, usually if there's a thick coating you should be okay but uh, if you use a brass brush the bristles are softer but yeah you still got to be careful if you're really worried about it what you can do is just use masking tape to kind of cover it up and then here just taking out the BB I noticed that when I was taking off the plastic cup already had a crack in it so it should be interesting taking this out I was thinking maybe I could just turn it with the with the crack in it, but it kind of snapped straight away just because it was so brittle. So gonna have to figure a way to get rid of that. And then I put a little bit of penetrating oil just to get the other one out. 
because the plastic side was so tight already I didn't want to take any risks and then this is just a little Pedro's BB holder and it just screws into the bottom bracket and what it does is it holds the tool on so it can free up your hands when you need to take it off or if you need to use a breaker bar or something um, yeah it's pretty handy shout out boot bike for that one but yeah that seemed to do the job so I just took it off just went nice and slow and then you have to unwind the tool out when you're winding it out to make sure you got enough uh, tension but yeah here's the BB just a little bit of rust there it seemed all right it seemed pretty good here I'm just taking out the rest of the plastic this was actually a way bigger pain than I thought it, it would have been I end up having to like hacksaw a little bit and be careful I didn't go too close to the threads and then I ended up using a screwdriver just to kind of tap it out but yeah it seems super stuck in there my kind of thought was like oh, I, if I can break it apart with the hacksaw maybe it'll give me a little bit more room just to kind of pop it out but yeah eventually I was able to grab it with some pliers and then uh, turn it and pull it out Yeah, you can see it was a, <laughs> a little bit of a mission, but it's out now and just gave it a clean. You can use a, I just used this detergent water mix and then put this rag through just to uh, clean it out. You can also use a wire brush to brush through the, through the threads if you really need to. And then I noticed this was inside the frame, just like a dead moth. But yeah, it kind of scared me when I saw its head poking out from the bottom bracket. All right, finally got that out. And time to install the headset. I'm just gonna use this DIY tool. Just a few bucks, pieces from Bunnings, and then clamp it on. Bunnings is a local hardware store in Australia, probably one of the biggest, uh, probably like a Home Depot in the US or something. And then here, just putting on the headset, and this has a little cut in the headset, so Crown Race fits on real easy. You can kind of just pop it on with your fingers. I just put a little bit of grease on there just to make sure it doesn't seize up. Um, yeah, here's the gap. And then, yeah, grease on the cups as well. Make sure you align them if you have graphics on them. This is now the time to align it. But um, these uh, don't have any graphics on them, so I didn't have to do that. And then, yeah, just putting uh, this bar in, two metal plates and a screw. And then you just do one at a time and slowly wind it on. Try to keep it as straight as possible. And, yeah, it should, uh, should go on, no issues. I think what you can do is with this tool, sometimes if it doesn't go in straight, you just have to move it around, move the bar in the center around to the side that's higher, and then it'll push that higher side down. But yeah, usually it goes in pretty even, as you can see here. And then yeah, the same with the top cup. When you wind it on, it'll get up to a point where it'll stop naturally and hit up against the head tube, and that's when you uh, stop winding it down. No need to go ham on it. And then I picked the silver headset to match the silver uh, seat post clamp. And then probably silver seat post, silver stem as well. All right, here's the frame, all done. Looking pretty sweet, I think. All right, here's the parts. What I'm gonna do is just give them clean up. Here, you can see it looks a little bit rough. So I'm gonna try and clean that off. And if it doesn't clean, I'll use a little bit of paint. Freshen those up a bit. And then I was able to find a little shell, like a plastic shell for this one to replace the broken one, fits pretty well. And I just gave this a wipe down, it's pretty good condition, so I can just probably put that on. I'm gonna clean up these. The rings are pretty decent. Got a lot of life left, so I'm gonna just run them, just clean them up. And yeah, should freshen up pretty well. Here, just taking everything apart. And yeah, sometimes I put a little bit of WD-40 on the bolts just to make it easier to unwind. You can some, see sometimes it takes a little bit just to get them off. But yeah, these eventually all came off. They have um, a little bit of dirt in them sometimes. And what a little tip is to make sure you get all the dirt out. Otherwise you could end up rounding, uh, rounding the bolts if your Allen keys are properly seated. But yeah, you can see all these came out pretty easily. The rings were pretty dirty. And then they had these little spaces in them as well. Just be uh, wary of these sometimes. They were like super, super thin, so I didn't know if they did anything. But here is a little tool. I actually held off on getting one of these for a long while, but they're for chain ring bolts and they have a little slot where it slots to the back of them and makes taking off chain ring bolts way easier if they're like super tight. 
I have in the past just used uh, a screwdriver if you can't get it off. It's a flathead screwdriver and that works too, but having this little tool makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, sometimes uh, you have those tools that you just hold off on getting and sometimes it's just easy just to get it and especially if you're going to work on a lot of bikes like me, it's, yeah, it's kind of worthwhile. It saves you a lot of time. Um, but yeah, if you're going to just only do one bike, you might not need it. And then here, just putting one of the bolts in this little egg carton just to sort it out. And then cleaning these uh, hoods. Just be careful with these little canty things, they just come out. And then, yeah, cleaning up this derailleur. This derailleur had a little of this kind of gunk on it. It looks like it's tree sap or something like that, but it was really hard to get off. I tried putting WD-40 and foil just to get it off. Some of it came off, but it had it all over the derailleur. So I decided that it's probably better just to put it in hot water and maybe it'll melt it off or at least help a little bit. Um, but here, just cleaning all the parts, just using dish detergent and just a nylon brush just to brush all the parts out. Um, you can see it ended up cleaning that uh, tree sap off. So that worked pretty well with the hot water. And then, yeah, just cleaning the rest of the parts. You can see all the parts here all clean looking good uh, and then using a little bit of WD-40 to get rid of the parts that had rust on them um, because I'm not using a vapor rust I just do the best I can with the rust and uh, with WD-40 and foil and then that's looking pretty good with the front Mac same with the rear Mac here just repeating the process yeah just getting it all off with the nylon brush as well and that one's done and then here same with the shifters uh, you can get a lot of dirt off or rust and stuff with just a nylon brush and it gets it in all the crevices and stuff like that. And then here just giving it a little buff up with the WD-40 again. <laughs> Probably just repeating myself here. Um, but yeah, these sh shine up pretty good. Um, and then same with the rings. One thing to note if you're using WD-40, just be careful with the uh, stickers because WD-40 is a solvent and it could take it off. And then here, just cleaning up these levers, giving them a bit of a refresh. I'm just using uh, house paint, exterior house paint. I think it's latex base, but it does a pretty good job, makes it nice and even. So what I do is I just paint it on and then I wipe it off with just a paper towel. And then what it does is it creates a pretty smooth kind of finish to it because all the paint is going straight into the, I, I guess you say pores of the, of the metal of the lever. So it kind of just sits in there and if you want to make it super smooth just make it real watery and then let it dry and do that a couple of times i just did it once but yeah it turned out pretty good i think uh just be careful not to get this paint on your clothes because it will not come off and then here just putting the little barrel justice back in i also cleaned up these hoods just under warm water and yeah i didn't show the video but you can just imagine what it's like washing this in the sink <laughs> Um, but yeah, they cleaned up pretty well. All right, so here's most of the parts and here's the frame. I decided I'm gonna chuck this on. I think this is gonna look pretty good. All right, it's just an old core stem. It's pretty long, but this frame is pretty small, so I think it should look all right. And then I'm gonna put just flat bars, run flat bars on this one, just the Shogun ones. And then with the wheels, I'm kind of perplexed on what to do. So this is what it looks like with uh, 26s. Just like that. And then I also had these other wheels, which I'll show you now. So yeah, kind of like a mullet setup. This is 24 on the back, 26 on the front. It looks like it'll be a fun ride. Yeah, this kind of gets me pumped to try something different. So I think I might see how I can make this work. One issue is I'm going to have to drop these down a little bit for the brake levers to fit um, because you can see it's right near the rim. This is also a disc wheel, FYI. I'm pretty sure this rim will work with rim brakes just because it's a, a generic rim and I don't think they're making, when they're doing these builds, they're not kind of using disc specific rims. So that should be fine. And then on the front, I just got this Atom Lab front, which the rim can run rim brakes. That's what it was previously when I picked it up, but I might get a different wheel that matches the back a little bit closer. Uh, we'll see how that goes. If I can find one before the end of the build, I'll chuck it on. 
but if not I'll just run that so we'll see how we go and then brakes I realize this doesn't have a canty hang on the back so I think I'm just gonna do V brakes just to make my life a little bit easier and then with this stem there's no hole in it so I'm gonna run V brakes on it just got these old Tektro ones just got to clean them up maybe put some new pads on and then you might be asking those levers are not gonna fit these V brakes but um, I'll show you how that works all right, this is an old style lever. This is usually a short pull brake, and this is for candy brakes usually. What I do is measure this, center, center the pivots, and if it's under 30, then a short pull. So this can only work on candy brakes. This is a newer V-brake lever, and for V-brake levers, what you need to do is make sure it's about 30 millimeters. So here, just measure the pivots again. This is 35, so works for V-brakes, it's over 30. And what's interesting about these old school levers is people have told me they're 80s and 90s because of the friction shifter. V-brakes haven't been invented yet, but if you measure the pull of this one, it's actually way over 30, it's about 40. And yeah, I think just back in the day, they were like testing a lot of different brakes and stuff, see how they work. But this one actually works with V-brakes. I did test it on my cargo XT bikes with the cross fork. So yeah, sometimes if you have these older style brakes with the long distance here, that's over 30, you can run them on V-brakes as well. So yeah, a little, little funny thing there. And then with this, you might be asking me how I'm gonna drop this down. This is how I'm gonna drop it down. Basically, you can get these adapters. Usually, people put them facing, uh, facing upwards, like this, like that. It has a little, um, like a canty stopper there, so that goes in the hole. And then you unscrew this and then put this on. But what I'm gonna do is actually do the opposite and drop it down and then just put this on the other side. It's probably easy if I show you how once I install it. And then if you're wondering, I just got these off, uh, I just got these off eBay. So originally I tried taking these off without the wheel in there and it just became too much of a mission. So yeah, use, uh, just take the wheel out and then you'll have more room just to kind of spin it around. They were in there pretty tight, uh, which is probably a good thing. They got Loctite and stuff in them, but um, it came off. And then here you can see how the other ones go on. You can just fit it in one of those holes and then just wind it down. Um, but yeah, the, actually the pieces of metal are pretty solid, nice and thick, so they don't have any flex to them at all. Alright, these are finally on. I don't know why it took tons of effort, but they're on. Well, after all that, you can see the V-brake doesn't work because there's not enough room. So, all right, so I was able to get it working. I had to go through a bunch of different brakes, but you can see this one works because this brake part aligns with kind of this thing. So it doesn't jut out. I was to show you some other brake pads or brake arms that don't, but yeah, that was a mission finally got it going here's just two other v brakes you can see it kind of ends right here but that means it's going to bump you to this and then same with this one it kind of ends here so it'll bump into this so yeah for some reason these brakes actually clear you can see the gap there no matter how hard i push it down it clears and I don't think these were meant to be used upside down but luckily i was able to get it work the other brakes that work have this similar design where it's flush is Diacom, uh, Diacompe, or some other generic ones. But yeah, all the Shimano, Tektro ones, they don't fit. But I was lucky enough to get this working. Just gotta give these a clean. All right, so just taking all the brakes apart. Uh, be careful of the pads. Make sure you don't get too much oil and stuff on the pads because you don't want your wheels to squeak when you put them on. If you do, you can use a brake cleaner, just car brake cleaner, just to clean them off and they should be good. Here, just rinsing everything off, you can see, just brush it down, gave it a wash. A little bit of WD-40 and a wire brush just to get, get rid of the rust again. Just do the best you can. And then, yeah, just giving these a quick wipe down, again with the WD-40. Um, but yeah, I think overall these are looking pretty good. And I think 
the black brakes look pretty good against the silver adapter for some reason. I don't know, but that, yeah, that worked out. Yeah, it's funny having uh, done a lot of bikes, I think there's like certain rules out there about matching, you know, brake colors with crank colors, with seat posts and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, just mix and match and see whatever looks good to you and then just run it, run it like that. Yeah, no, no rules really, which is probably the fun thing. And then here, yeah, just putting the brakes on. I just used the middle hole for now just to see how it works. And then, yeah, just wind it, wind it down. Um, but yeah, just wind them down till they're tight. And then just they should spring back as well, the brake levers. As I was turning the brake, it kept winding. So I ended up running a spacer right there. Hopefully that should fix it. Yeah, the whole time I was putting these brakes on that always seemed to be an issue and I was just like, oh, why did I uh, put myself through this? But yeah, I guess whenever you try something new, there's uh, always stuff that comes up. Um, but eventually, eventually I got there and um, yeah, got them, got them to fit, they turn or they spring back and then they go against the pads, uh, against the rim. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, I was pretty happy once they worked, but yeah, it took a, it took a little while to get them working. And then when I put on the front ones, I was like, oh, the front ones are so easy because that's what it's made for. So yeah, pretty, pretty funny. Um, you can also see that previously I painted this rim to make it black. Um, so that's probably why it looks like that. All right, brakes are on. I still gotta readjust the pads a little bit, but looking pretty cool, I think. All right, one thing I noticed was the star nuts pushed all the way down. So I'm just gonna have to tap it out, install the new one. So yeah, I don't know why it was in there, but I guess it was in there from previous. But yeah, basically try to tap it out with this long extension socket tool. And it didn't seem like it was going nowhere. So I decided to take the fork out first, just so I could see what's going on inside. So yeah, here it is. You can see it's kind of stuck in there. I should be able to tap it out all the way, but it's off angle a little bit. So I'm going to try and strain it first before I tap it out. So yeah, I just used a screwdriver just to kind of pull on it and strain it as best I could. And then, yeah, try tapping it out again using the socket tool. But it started moving a little bit more, but my tool was getting quite short. So I had to put another extender in there just to make sure uh, I go all the way. All right, tapped it out. Uh, I guess you could leave it in there if you want, but if you can tap it out, why not? Here's the new one, and I just put an old bolt in with a flat head, and I'm just gonna bang it in, just freestyle it. I should try to make a tool for this to make it a little bit easier, but yeah, it's easy enough, just tap it and if it isn't straight, just try to strain it up by hitting it sideways. I know this is uh, probably not the best way to do it, but it does it. All right, and I noticed this quite loose, so I'm gonna put a little shim in there, shim it out, and that should do it. Top one, it's nice and tight, so it should be fine. So yeah, just using a little bit of a uh, beer can, this aluminum is pretty thin. And what I do is I just cut a strip of it just so I can make sure I can line it all the way around to it goes all the way so it's even within the head tube. And then I just give it a little trim. And then sometimes you might have to recut it if it's too long. It always seems like it goes a little longer than what I cut. Um, but it's fitting pretty well, but it's a little high, so I decided to trim off a little bit more just to make sure it's flush in there. And see what it looks like once I get it in. Um, but that's fitting well now, so what you do is basically do the same thing, put a little bit of grease on, and then squeeze it down. Uh, make sure it's in straight, make sure the aluminum isn't bent or anything like that, because you want it to be uh, exactly the right fit. But yeah, that's on nice and tight now. Pretty happy with how that worked out. Isn't moving at all. Can't pull it out. All good. And then the next thing up is 
putting the fork in. After all that, it seemed like the fork was on already, right? But yeah, sometimes there's little things that you need to fix to make it a hundred percent. And then yeah, just putting the head headset pieces on, spacer, and then running this core stem. The thing looks pretty good with all the the silver as well. I've never really done a bike with uh, this much silver up top, but yeah, the thing looks pretty good. And then chucking the wheel on wheel just fits with the pads because it has a thick tire I think the tire is 2.25 and then yeah all on nice and snug all right checking the bars on you can see I made this little tool Pedro's tool that kind of spreads uh, spreads the stem out a little bit so you can just put the bars in pretty easy it's just a little notch out of a lever you can see like that um, and it's plastic so it won't damage your stem but yeah, just sticking everything on, putting these uh, DR, DMR grips on, and then I kind of just measure it, just so I know the distance, and then it should sort out your lever distance as well. But I think these uh, these were flange, but then I cut them off, cut the flange off just for a little bit of a cleaner look. Um, and then yeah, just use water just to pop them on. That's worked for me in the past, so it works here. And I think, yeah, the front end's looking pretty good already. Just tying all the levers up. Has the little uh, friction shifters on top, which looks pretty cool, I think. Looks like a, a D or something. And then here, yeah, just checking on the rear Mac. Looking good there. Make sure it springs down, make sure it's working. Everything's good. And then installing the BB here. Just a little bit of grease. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then, yeah, just threading this through. I just usually thread it in just by hand first, just to make sure it goes in nice. Same with the little plastic cup. And then after that, I use the tool by hand, and then I use the, a shifter afterwards. Uh, sometimes it might take you a little bit to get it on right, but um, yeah, just take your time. It's better just to take your time so you don't wreck the threads. Um, and that was on pretty good. Um, I ended up spinning this and for some reason it wasn't as good as I thought it was when I took it off. So it was a little bit uh, grimy I guess. So I tried to clean it out as best I could, just pop the shield here and you can pop uh, another plastic bit and it has bearings in it so you can kind of like re-service it. But yeah, I just basically cleaned it out as best I could and then just pumped it with uh, new grease. I didn't know how to take off the other side, so I guess I could only really do one side. Um, but what you have to do here to get the little bearing race back on is you got to align the bearings first before you push down on the plastic thing. You can see I'm doing that right here just with the spoke. And this was a little bit fiddly, but yeah, I got there eventually. And then yeah, just pop everything back on. Spins way better than it was before, but yeah, I couldn't work out how to do the other side, which is a little bit of a, a little bit of a bummer. But yeah, what can you do? I'll order another one, uh, and if it comes in time, I'll chuck it on. But yeah, this is what it is for now. All right, so I'm just about to put the housing, cut the housing for this, and it's a little tricky here. You can see on this front end, it's got the two cable stops, so the brake will go through the middle. It's kind of just like a a clip in running to the back usually they do this for hydraulic brakes but there's no hydraulic adapter so it'll be for v brakes so i'm going to run the cable brake cable straight through the middle and then here you can see the gear shifting cable goes through the side ones but running a little bit awkward because it's so high up i guess and maybe because these shifters are close together with the flat bars what i'm actually going to do is just run it on the outside here and then this back one is going to have to come around this side like that front mech should be fine it will just be on this side but yeah there's really no way around it because it just is a little bit awkward like that and then when you're turning it it's gonna have a bend straight up so don't want that either one last thing to help the cable go a bit smoother you can see there's these shifters have these bolts 
where you can kind of just like rotate them just rotate them down a little bit and it'll make it just a tiny bit smoother yeah just little things but it's going to help it out a bit i think a little tip for sizing up the cable on v brakes is i use a little band just put together shout out chucky size it up like that so you get a more kind of accurate length of housing all right just cutting off the cables here and my tip is just to cut them a little bit longer because you never know once the wheel turns or something that you forgot to measure you might need to resize it easier to cut more often to glue some on okay, there we go pretty much all laced up uh yeah this one might be a little bit long but i'm gonna wait till i get the maybe get the chain on before i resize this one but yeah you can always you can always cut it a bit shorter and yeah not too not too bad about this too i think it looks actually looks all right having it come around the back and then yeah don't forget to clean up your cables you can put a spoke through there or just recut it again sometimes when it's not a clean cut like this i'll just snip off the extra metal bit here just showing you a sharpened spoke just goes in like that and then here lacing up the brakes um, just put that little fat end in so yeah mountain bike brake cables and road brake cables are a little bit different mountain bike and bmx ones have a little puck shape and then road ones is more kind of like a mushroom or something um, so yeah just make sure you get the right ones when you're uh, putting putting new brakes on here just lacing them up and when I did this I usually just eyeball it to see the cable length but I was trying to readjust it on both sides you can use that little screw to kind of align the brake arms but for some reason <laughs> it kept scraping and I couldn't get it to work and I realized my wheel was out of true so yeah make sure your wheel is true before you try to adjust your brakes otherwise you're going to end up having to do it twice which is kind of like what i did i just forgot um, but yeah true your wheel first if it's out and then yeah and then just uh do your brakes up should be way easier after your wheel is true and that was working pretty well yeah sometimes you think some things will be quick chuck, chuck the wheel on and put the brake on um, but then yeah if your wheel's not true it could take you a little bit longer and then here just putting on the back brake on uh yeah the back brake was way easier it was way more true i did put in a stand already i did have to fix it a little bit but it was way more true than the front one so yeah that was uh <laughs> that made my life way easier and just cut off the excess cable make sure it's working All right, so this came, just going to chuck it on. This is uh, 124.5 and then this old one was 127. I think it's still going to work because when I put it in, it still sticks out a little bit. Um, if you want to measure, you can measure the middle ring to make sure it lines up in the middle of the cassette there. But yeah, this is basically all they had, so I think it will work. And then here, just taking off the BB, taking off the BB again, um, re-greasing it, putting the new one on. New one fit really well and obviously spun really good as well um, but yeah i'm pretty i'm pretty stoked i got a new one it makes the it's gonna make the ride like way better and yeah it's good to have kind of like a, a new bb especially on an old frame and here cleaning up these bolts without vapor rust again so old school style or <laughs> probably not old school just what i used to do um, just wire brush and wd-40 just one by one it doesn't take as long as you think uh, it's tedious but yeah not as long as you think and then here putting the chain rings better back together just a little bit of grease here and yeah you can just dab it on makes it way easier than trying to squirt it out from the gun every single time and then yeah not too much to it just make sure they're done up tight I do the outer rings first you can see I had a little bit of issue fitting these rings back in just because that smaller ring was in a way so I definitely do the smaller ring first um, also sometimes the chain ring has a little tab uh, that little tab goes behind the chain ring arm for how you want to align it but yeah some people have rotated the bio pace one notch or 90 degrees 
just to get a, make it a little bit smoother because these bio faces are oval. That was a kind of an old school hack people used to do, but I just kept it uh, regular for this one. And here it is, all on. You can see plenty of room still, even with the bio pace rings. Sometimes it's hard to get, I judge because they're overlized. But yeah, I'm soaked on that. It would, it would have sucked to have uh, the chain ring hit the chain stays for sure. But yeah, here putting the other arm on, and that's looking good. It's spinning real well, you can see. Really nice. And then here putting on the front mech on, you just want to align it so it's parallel with the chain rings when you're looking from top down, and then just make sure it clears the teeth. Uh, I think it should be two to three millimeters from the tooth so that you, know, you can use your kind of gauge on that. Um, and then yeah, with the bio pace again, just make sure it's, you spin the chain ring all the way around because it's overlaced. All right, so this doesn't have a cassette on there, so I'm just gonna chuck this on. This is eight speed 11 by 34. And this shifter is just a seven, but I'm pretty sure it'll pull eight and then I'm probably gonna run these both friction anyway. Technically, you could probably go up to 11 or 12, but then you would have to give it, get a different size chain. But yeah, the option's there. So one thing with the brake setup on this one and the fat tire, this is a 2.4. You do have to let some air out before you put the tire or pull the wheel out. So yeah, if anyone's doing that, just take that into account. Um, but here, yeah, just sliding on the cassette, pretty straightforward. And then just make sure you tighten it up nice and tight. I think it's 40 Newton meters, but I usually go a little bit less than that. I just eyeball it. And then here, putting the back wheel on, pumping up the tie again. And that's ready to roll. And then here, aligning up the rear mech. So yeah, you just want the cog to be aligned with the last one. Sometimes it can go a little bit more over to the right if you need to. And then just those two screws will help you uh, limit how far it goes out. You can see this one doesn't go out far enough, so I have to wind it counterclockwise to loosen it a little bit to give it more room to align with the rear cog. It's hard to show in camera because the camera doesn't align it perfectly, but you can see that is. And then here, just lacing up the cables, the gear cables, sliding it through. No issues here with the front one. That's working well. Make sure it's nice and parallel with the rings. And then here, same thing on the top with the limit screws. Just make sure you limit it so it doesn't go too far in. You can see I just turn it there with the inner ring. And then that's working well with the front mech reaches both ends. Sometimes you got to adjust it once it's done, but it's good to try to set up as close as possible. Chucking the chain on, so this is a rust buster chain. I think it has a special coating to stop it from rusting. Never tried it before, but see how it goes. Chucking on the chain and yeah, basically you just size it, run it through the biggest cog on the back and the biggest ring on the front, and then you add two links or one full link, and then that should do it. You just make sure you run it through the rear derailleur properly, make sure you get both jockey wheels and then connect it again. Make sure there's no kinks in it and that should be good. Um, here you can see when I'm shifting, it shifts well because it's friction but it doesn't go up to the highest cog. Alright so here's the issue, you can see how the cog's real close to the big cog. So what I need to do is find a way to pull that down a little bit. This is what the B-limit screw does. So yeah, basically you gotta, if you wind it in, it will give you more space and you wind it out, it'll give you less space. But what you wanna do is make it as close to the biggest cog as possible with it still running smooth. If it's too close, the derailleur will jump and be a little bit weird. Um, but if you kind of size it up back and forth, eventually you find, find it where it runs the smoothest. Um, sometimes it might take a little bit, but I think probably, <laughs> probably no more than like 10 minutes or so. But yeah, you can see here I got it running super smooth, so I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. And then yeah, cutting off the cables, putting on the cable ends. I 
think this is the only cable end I put on the bike uh, because other ones won't get hit. And then yeah, just putting a saddle on, just chucking a turbo on here. I tried looking for a new one, but I couldn't find any others on marketplace at the moment and just wanted to finish the bike up. But yeah, I think turbo is classic, looks good. Putting on the pedals, the pedals are these uh, Crank Brothers Stamp Pedal Stamp 3, which I got off. Uh, I think they're magnesium, so they're pretty light, but they have nice teeth on them. Um, but yeah, that was basically the last thing. So, here's the final bike. Alright, super stoked with the bike, so much fun to ride, really good for cornering and skids, anything that's light on the back end, wheelies. Stem I'd say is a little touch long for me, but probably good for racing and climbing. Big thank you to Stuart and Tim for donating to this build, thank you to the people who bought merch and or stickers, appreciate it. Last but not least, thank you for watching, let me know what you think of the bike, and I will catch you in the next one, peace.